Good morning and welcome to Rising. Thank you for tuning in. I'm again joined by Michael Starr Hopkins. Good welcome. To be here. Great to have you. Let's get into it. It's a consequential day, of course, for President Joe Biden. He's going to be giving a rare unscripted press conference later today at, I believe, 6.30 p.m. to a crowd of journalists. Every utterance, stumble, and pause will, of course, be analyzed. Now, Biden has been hosting 38 world leaders so far this week, marking the 75th anniversary of NATO. Calls for the president to step aside, however, do continue. Vermont Senator Peter Welch became the first Senate Democrat to outright call for Biden to drop out. Welch wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post yesterday titled, Biden should withdraw for the good of the country. Let's take a listen to Democratic Senators Dick Durbin and Richard Blumenthal speaking about it yesterday. How concerned are you about his chances in November? I'm very concerned. It's going to be a close race, and we all, all already knew that. But, I mean, you have to be concerned about his viability, aren't you? I am deeply concerned about Joe Biden winning this November because it is an existential threat to the country if Donald Trump wins. So I think that we have to reach a conclusion as soon as possible. Plus, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has privately signaled to donors he's open to a Democratic ticket that is not led by Biden. That's according to reporting from Axios. Meanwhile, actor George Clooney, who has long supported and been one of Biden's biggest donors, also called for Biden to drop out, which is what prompted MSNBC's Joe Scarborough to say this this morning. Let's watch. Let's say one thing that we do have to underline here, just so, so viewers can, can follow what's going on behind the scenes, is... is the Biden campaign and many Democratic officials do believe that Barack Obama uh, is is quietly uh, working behind the scenes uh, to orchestrate this. So Obama is orchestrating calls for Biden to drop out of the race, apparently. But Joe's not the only uh, MSNBC anchor who's changed his tune on Biden. Take a listen to anchor Chris Hayes. Clooney's observations are not unique. Joe Biden is a decent man who, like I said, has done nothing wrong. He hasn't been caught in a scandal. He is just aging. And that reality makes him, I think, increasingly likely to lose re-election to a Republican candidate. And it's not just lawmakers in the mainstream media signaling Biden to step aside. A new ABC News Washington Post Ipso poll found two thirds of Americans, including a majority of Biden's own supporters, Democrats, say he should step aside as his party's presumptive nominee. But Trump world hasn't been as focused on attacking Biden. Instead, they've been seemingly shifted their attention to attacking Vice President Kamala Harris. Here he is at a Florida rally yesterday. But whatever else can be said about crooked Joe Biden, you have to give him credit for one brilliant decision, probably the smartest decision he's ever made. He picked Kamala Harris as his vice president. No, it was brilliant. Because it was an insurance policy, maybe the best insurance policy I've ever seen, Marco. If Joe had picked someone even halfway competent, they would have bounced him from office years ago. Meanwhile, the GOP's oversight committee subpoenaed three White House aides uh, Wednesday, demanding that they sit for depositions over President Biden's mental health, according to Axios. Hmm. And that's part of this feeling now that we all have that mm -hmm. everyone knew. Yeah. about Biden's decline and not only was silent about it, but demonized people for asking questions about it. You know, this George Clooney op-ed, uh, which we talked about on the show yesterday mm -hmm. toward the end of our show, now that I've had more time to kind of like think it through and, and see what the reaction is. It's pretty troubling. It, he was, so he hosted the fundraiser mm -hmm. that Biden participated in um, what, a month Obama, ago. Yeah. Obama was there. Jimmy Kimmel moderated this conversation, yeah. and he interacted, Glooney interacted with, uh, with Biden there. That was the video footage that was part of the, the, the rapid succession of three videos that were described by Karine Jean-Pierre mm -hmm. and other Biden defenders as cheap fakes, as yeah. manipulated videos that were designed to make you think there's something wrong with Biden, even though there's not. It was footage from that event. Mm -hmm. Now, here we are a month later, George Clooney, who hosted the event and er, interacted with Joe Biden, and everyone else who was there, according to um, uh, according to John Favreau yeah. and uh, David Axelrod, they said this on MSNBC yesterday or CNN, one of the channels. They said they were there, and that everyone who interacted with Biden had the same thought: "Oh my God, holy shit, he can't <laughs> do this anymore." 
But that was a month ago. We endured an entire media cycle yeah. of the uh, of, of the Biden defenders screaming at us that there's nothing wrong with Biden, and everyone in the media then portraying Republicans as dishonest and liars for saying there was something wrong, when behind the scenes, all the Biden people who were there are like, oh yeah, he's totally has a problem. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why you're seeing- It's a, a deception. Well, it's why you're seeing such a rabid response, not just from the press, but even from Biden defenders. You know, I wrote a column right after the midterm saying Biden should step aside, he's got goodwill, all, the, all those kind of things, and it was heavily criticized at the time. Now, you know, we moving forward, we have the same situation come about where people start talking about how we need to have a conversation about his health and mental health, and the campaign and the administration does the same thing. They attack people. It's going to be really interesting. They do attack to, people. It, it's, it's personal, too. It's not just you know a substantive thing. It's a personal attack. Right. It's going to be interesting to see this afternoon at the press conference how the press goes after Biden when they get the chance to ask him one-on-one -on -one questions. Karine Jean-Pierre and her ilk, they were deceitful about Biden's state. They, they were. They were deceitful. And then the mainstream media was either not curious enough mm -hmm. to properly investigate that or they were complicit in foisting this cover-up on the American people. It's now undeniable, and yes, the press has absolutely turned on Biden, mm -hmm. and now they're looking for the, tru uh, the truth. If you watch CNN, they're having none of it now. Um, but that's gonna be, it's still gonna be too little too late for, I know, for a lot of conservatives um, who are watching and saying, but we've been saying this, we've been calling attention to this for forever, and we were, we were told it was manipulated images. I, this whole thing is gonna, this is gonna be another example, like with Russiagate, like with the, the laptop story, um, some COVID stuff of the mainstream media having lost credibility and faith with a lot of Americans um, because of how they treated this issue. Well, and now they're gonna have to spend the next 120 days basically trying to relitigate this as long as Biden's on the top of the ticket. And that's really the big yeah. problem for Democrats. As long as he's on the top of the ticket, the media feels like they have to now course correct and overcorrect because of the job that was done previously. Yeah. He cannot be at the top of the ticket at this point. And you can kind of see the panic coming in from Trump yeah. now with the idea that the VP may be the new nominee. Despite what he said there, it seems clear that Trump wants to run against Biden. Absolutely. Um, they do not want Biden to go. They see the polling. They know that they're in a pretty good position, mm -hmm. that Trump is in a pretty good position versus Biden right now. No reason to rock the boat. From their perspective, let's not do anything differently. We have a strong chance. Let's just uh, proceed ahead as planned to November. <laughs> um, I, they don't want Kamala at the top of the ticket, although they could very well. It, Based on the polling, Trump would also be likely to beat Kamala Harris or anyone else. I think that the attacks on Kamala that he's going to do, kind of the racially tinged mm -hmm. thing that Trump does, that's like his shtick, it is going to cause African Americans and young people to turn out in Obama-esque mm -hmm. numbers. Just watching that clip made me wish that she jumped in the race so she can wash, right. wipe the floor with them. There is a protective sense around her for even people who haven't been big supporters of her. Trump going after her, I think, is just gonna light a fire under Democrats' asses. Yeah. I think that theoretically could be correct, but it's not going to come to pass because Joe Biden is not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm sticking to my prediction. He has no- By hell or high water, Joe Biden will not be the nominee. No, it, it's, it would take an act of God. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. The Almighty must come down from heaven and tell Joe Biden he's got to get out of the race, and that's not going to happen. He's given him the boat and the oars, so it's yeah. time for Biden to row <laughs> his way out. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Obviously, uh, tonight is very important mm -hmm. for Joe Biden. If he does a really good job, I think he might be able to staunch the bleeding. I don't expect him to do a really good job. But the problem is the bleeding is never going to stop. Like, he, maybe he stops it tonight, but then yeah. he's going to rip the, the stitches out two days from now when he misspeaks, and every day, it, it, people are just waiting. But he just has event. to hold on. He doesn't have to do anything. He, he should stop, frankly. From his perspective, mm -hmm. he should stop doing media appearances entirely. He should cancel the next debate. He should, never should have done this debate in the first place. He should just hole up in the basement. And the, like his delegates, as yeah. far as we can tell, I've, I've looked at reporting on the delegates at the convention. They're bound by good conscience to vote for him, so they don't actually legally have to vote for him. Mm -hmm. But... The reporting so far has been, and this could change. And he's, yeah, they've been calling the delegates. The, the delegates are saying, with rare exception, they're still voting for Biden. And so that's it. But that's it. It's still going to happen. Until they're not. It's like every well, other. It's every other scandal. It's like you know, look at when Governor Cuomo. Yeah. He he wasn't going to leave. He wasn't going to leave. He wasn't going to leave until he leaves. That's how every po no politician just voluntarily that is a rare walks out example in our modern times of someone actually leaving. Right. Generally, they don't leave. 
I mean, look at Al Franken. Al Franken, if Al he Franken... He regrets had, leaving. He never, if that happened today, he, he would have never in a million years left. If exactly. that same exact scandal happened to him today, mm -hmm. he would say... Go to hell, I'm not leaving. But Democrats... That was at the peak of, like, that we can still force yeah. people out for mm -hmm. sex-related scandals. I, I will be very... I don't know if impressed is the word, but if Democrats hold the line like Republicans do, that, I mean, that will be a game-changer for, I think, how Democrats operate. We just... That's not our MO. That's... We are an emotional group. We operate off of emotion. And it's going to be interesting to see because I think he has spent so much goodwill at this point. I think the tide emotionally has turned on him. People are mad. Yeah, I mean, people, the leaders of his party, but again, Trump has been in that exact same situation with the leaders of his party. <laughs> so and Biden is going to become all, the new Trump? Go after them. I mean, he is, he, he is in his it's desperate effort to cling to power. Yeah. He is behaving in a very Trump-esque way. And what we've learned from Trump is that that can work. It can. That can absolutely work. There's no independent mechanism. We don't have accountability over these aging political leaders. Mm -hmm. They will, their conviction that they should stay in power is greater than the, the distributed con, uh, conviction mm -hmm. among other people that they should go. Their will to do it, it's, it's almost, it's almost, it's not admirable, it's impressive. <laughs> the, the Morning Joe call, I guess, it was unsettling. Like, to hear yes. Joe Biden call into Morning Joe, it, it reminded me of Trump so much. Yeah. It, it, Kind of, I got like goosebumps about it. Yeah. That's not where Democrats are at. If we're at a point now where we're starting to mimic Trump behavior to stay into power, then there's got to be some soul searching. This man, life. Joe Biden, has wanted to be the president for 40 years. He did it. He got and it. He got it. Okay. Well, but he, he, can, he can do it again. <laughs> but he can't. He thinks he can. Yeah. He's convinced he can. And I think at this point, he's the only And person. his wife is convinced he can. And Hunter Biden is convinced that... Uh, well, he might as well try. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I'll give it my goodest try. Why not? Goodest Good, try. My goodest try. We're all going to make our goodest try here today on Rising. Much more of our show to come. Stick around. <laughs>